Edward Fisher of the University of California, Los Angeles, and Ronald Geiselman of Florida International University, we're investigating ways of turning findings from psychological research, such as the context reinstatement effect, into practical techniques that could be used in real police investigations. They developed a procedure that they call the cognitive interview. The way that police traditionally interview eyewitnesses involves frequent interruptions by the interviewer, a focus on details relevant to the investigation, and the use of the question and answer format. As we've already seen, one problem with a question-focused approach is that there is the opportunity for false memories to be created by leading questions. Edward Fisher and Ronald Geiselman raided the cognitive psychology literature, including the work on context reinstatement, to create the cognitive interview. Here are some of the key ideas behind it. First, memory research tells us that memory traces are usually complex and contain different sorts of information. Second, research indicates that the ease with which a memory is recalled depends on how much informational overlap it has with the cues being used to retrieve it. This refers to work on what's known as the encoding specificity principle by Endel Tolving of the University of Toronto, amongst others. When something is remembered, it's encoded with respect to the context in which it is studied, producing a unique trace which incorporates information from both target and context. This means that the probability of successfully remembering something depends on the degree of overlap between the information present at retrieval and the information stored in memory. That is, the more overlap you can get between a memory of something that you've already recalled and something you want to recall, then the better the chance of retrieving that desired memory. Another finding is that any given memory can be accessed by a number of different retrieval cues. That is, if you can't access the memory you want via one particular cue, then try another. The cognitive interview uses these principles of memory retrieval to help witnesses maximize their chances of recalling the events of a crime. Question is, what's the evidence that it actually does result in better eyewitness memory recall than more traditional police interviews. Fisher and Geiselman tested the original version of the cognitive interview by recruiting 17 highly experienced interviewers, all of whom had been trained in forensic hypnosis. This included police detectives, CIA investigators, and private detectives. They were randomly assigned to either use the cognitive interview or to use standard police interviews as well as other options. Well, then, the researchers got 89 undergraduates to watch one of four films depicting a violent murder, borrowed from the LAPD Training Academy. 48 hours after watching the crime, the students were interviewed by the professional investigators. These interviews were transcribed and scored. An exhaustive list of all the details of the crimes that were mentioned was drawn up and then researchers calculated the proportion of those items mentioned by each of the students. Doing this, they found that the cognitive interview elicited between 25 and 35% more information than the standard police interview. So, that's very promising. As a result of this early work, Fusher and Geiselman went on to refine their methods and also to test them in more realistic situations. Here's one example where they tested the cognitive interview for real police detectives solving genuine crimes. This time they recruited 16 police detectives based in Florida. In the initial stage of the study, they recorded and analyzed five to seven interviews by each detective over four months. Then, they randomly chose half the detectives and trained them in how to give the cognitive interview. Then, they monitored and analyzed interviews conducted by both the trained and untrained detectives for seven months afterwards. They eventually amassed between two and seven appropriate interviews per detective. 
all of the interviews were transcribed and analysed as before. Of course, one big disadvantage of studying real crime investigations is that it is much harder to determine what is actually true or not for the purposes of determining whether the interviews were yielding real or false memories. The way they did this in this particular study was by comparing what the witnesses said with another reliable source of information, such as another witness, a confession by the criminal, or from hidden camera footage. So, they only looked at corroborated facts, and this is what they found. So, the cognitive interview in this real-world study looking at real crimes led to a 47% increase in the number of facts recalled compared with a standard police interview. There's since been a large body of research looking at these cognitive interview techniques. A meta-analysis of some of this work by Gunter Koenken of the University of Kiel and his colleagues confirmed that over 42 studies, the cognitive interview reliably generates more correct details than the standard interview. And this effect was greater the more realistic the context of the study. The cognitive interview is now routinely taught to police officers in Britain and also widely used in the US, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Canada, Singapore and Hong Kong. Of course, uh, as we're taking a scientific approach in this course, we also need to talk about the limitations of the cognitive interview. Like everything else in life, it's not perfect. The cognitive interview is more difficult to conduct than a standard interview. It takes longer and it requires a lot more effort on the part of the interviewer. Also, it's only useful for cooperative eyewitnesses. It's very much about improving recall memory. It doesn't help with recognition memory, for example, recognizing a suspect in a lineup. However, taking all of that on board, overall, it's still considered a valuable tool for the investigator. And it's a great example of how cognitive psychology research can be successfully applied to the real world.